us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, there was a, a time in my life where I thought everything was okay with me. Uh, until the, the doctors told us that our daughter, that we had waited 14 years uh, to, to see and love and, and, and to know until that time. And they told us that she was going to die. And one afternoon I was sitting on my couch in the living room and I said this to the Lord, is this all? Is this all that you have for me? And the answer that came back was, no, there is more. I heard it just as clearly as, as Brother Fred is sitting close to me right here. I heard that voice say to me, no, there is more. And I believe that there are people that are comfortable and satisfied where they are. And they, they don't seek any changes. Um, but I believe that the Lord has something more for each one of us. And I believe that he has a higher realm for us to move in and operate in, to live in. We live and move and have our being in Christ Jesus. And so I believe that's a higher realm. And tonight, uh, I'll let Brother Fred give you the title. Uh, but we want more. I want more. I want to grow more. I want more power. I want more of his love in me. I want more of his nature in me. And there is definitely more. And, and so I'm going to turn it over to, to Brother Fred. We welcome Sophia and, and Quinn uh, tonight. Uh, thank you all for, for being here. Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is An Elevated Lifestyle. Uh, and that word elevated means that we can go higher and higher. And that's, that's a key word for this message, that we don't have to live in a mundane, uh, routine existence, uh, but we can live an elevated lifestyle. And really, I'm talking about victory over uh, fear, worry, mm -hmm. and anxiety. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this goes back to some lessons I learned uh, 25 or 30 years ago that, that I had to live an overcoming life and, and I could not live in fear and worry and anxiety. You know, Jesus said uh, that uh, sufficient is the evil of the day. So don't get, don't get caught up in the, in the future. Don't be worried about the future, but, but, uh, we have to realize that we have victory because of Jesus Christ and victory because of the cross. Amen. And, and so that's what we're going to be focusing on, how to overcome fear, worry, and anxiety. And uh, this is certainly something that can grip us at any time. Uh, and maybe as long as everything is going well, maybe we don't get concerned about those three things. But those three things are going to come around over and over again. And what was interesting in my uh, life was uh, I lived a pretty uh, peaceful life, uh, professionally I'm talking about. Uh, I was a teacher and a researcher, but when God told me to become an administrator and I uh, was over 100 people, all of a sudden I had all kinds of chaos uh, <laughs> thrown at me, uh, 100 people. Uh, they all had their own agendas. They were all, many of them were selfish. Uh, they were, they created a lot of problems for me. And I had to learn some skills to deal with mm. fear, worry, and anxiety. And so I don't live in that kind of lifestyle anymore. Mm. I had to learn some skills. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How can we learn some skills uh, to deal with these kinds of day-to-day -day activity uh, that, that pull us down, 
because mm -hmm. if the enemy uh, can't pull us down, then we have people around us and, and they, uh, they're they going to throw up their agendas and their selfishness mm -hmm. and their problems and all of that comes to uh, a head and, and becomes clear that uh, you're not living a life that's by yourself. You have to interact with people. And so you have to have these skills. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, just some very simple uh, skills uh, to deal with and overcome fear, worry, and anxiety. Yeah. Uh, and even if you're living a peaceful life today, well, good for you, but you're going to need, you're going to need yeah. these skills. And so yeah. that's what we're going to talk about. And I want to say that it's because of Jesus Christ and the work of the cross. And the work of the cross is finished. Yeah. And so we can overcome those uh, problems that uh, not just the devil, but the world throws at us, our friends, uh, a, a professional. I know many of you uh, have now a professional job or have had a professional job. And i just give you a, a few examples. There were uh, one of the things I needed to do when I became an administrator, I had to set some things in order. There were a lot of things that were chaotic and uh, people were just running wild. And uh, God wanted me to bring order to it. But once you start bringing order uh, to 100 people, uh, there, some of them are going to get upset. And I had people. Uh, they don't like it. I had people stand up and scream at me and threaten uh, court cases uh, uh, against me. And all I was doing was just trying to put things in order. And uh, I couldn't do everything at once, but I began putting things in order one by one, but I had to deal with some things and uh, they were constantly um, trying to bring trouble against me, uh, threatening lawsuits, uh, threatening harm to me, all kinds of things, things you, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have imagined would happen, but they happened. And I had to learn how to deal with some things. So those are what I'm going to be talking about tonight. How can we have victory every day of our life? Have victory in Jesus Christ, uh, victory over fear and victory over worry and victory over anxiety. Well, one of the first things I had to do was to deal with unforgiveness uh, because if people are screaming at you and, uh, threatening you as they did me. I had to learn uh, some skills and, and I believe one of the first ones uh, was unforgiveness. I had to, I had to learn to uh, put down unforgiveness. Now mm -hmm. the, Jesus said, we know from the, uh, from the prayer about uh, praying that uh, his, that the king, his kingdom come. Part of those verses talked about uh, of forgiveness and uh, we have to mm -hmm. we have to forgive and, and then it said uh, forgive those who have debts against you now that well, that's an interesting concept they have debts okay so they didn't actually owe me money uh, but when when they did something to me they created a debt uh, that they if, oh, if they wow. harmed me or threatened me then there was a debt involved and so if I just simply forgave a person, then I would wipe away the debt. Okay, so that's forgiveness, then takes you down to zero level, a zero. Um, but that a zero is not a good place to be. Mm -hmm. and, and you've got to go beyond that point. And uh, so if, if somebody, let's say, threatened me or they caused me harm, and I said, I forgive you, then I, that wipes away the debt. And so the balance then is a zero. And so what I found out I had to do was to do something positive for people. I had to do po other, if you're at a zero, the next time you see that person, then you get all upset and worried again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you forgave them. Uh, and, and so they owe you nothing because you just wiped it off of but, but it's a zero. And so what you have to do is to do something positive for people. And uh, 
I, I think one of the things that I learned to do was to pray for people, mm -hmm. uh, pray, pray for people uh, who wanted to hurt me, who wanted to harm me, who, who wanted uh, uh, to come against me. A and I had to forgive them, not only forgive them, but I had to do something positive because I don't want a zero balance. Uh, if you look mm -hmm. at a balance sheet, uh, and I'm sure all of you balance your budget. Uh, if you just get down to zero and then you see that person again and they start screaming at you again, well, all of a sudden you, you've got problems again. And uh, what I had to do was to be positive, uh, move things from, away from a zero into a positive realm where I, I could pray for them and believe for their healing. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I found uh, was that a, a lot of the people that were so uh, selfish and had come up against me or were so hostile, they had uh, high blood pressures and they had uh, heart uh, diseases. They had, and so consequently, uh, I could have just left them there at a level of zero, but I, I realized, and over time, if you deal with people over time, you'll see what their problems are and they begin to manifest. And a lot of times, uh, these are the people who have high blood pressure, they're not controlling. Uh, their life. And so uh, I knew that my uh, solution to that was really to put it in a positive uh, way. And so I, I prayed for people. I prayed for their health uh, I, because I didn't want anybody to perish. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want anybody to destroy, be destroyed by uh, heart disease. Uh, and so I prayed for them. So I got away from a zero balance. I had a positive balance uh, towards the people around me, uh, even those people who harmed me, I didn't. I didn't just forgive them and leave it at zero. I, I went beyond. I believe that's what Jesus said. He Amen. said, uh, uh, "If, you, if, if the, they ask you to go a mile, go two miles. Uh, and, and if they uh, want your coat, we'll give them your cloak too." And, and, and that's just the way Jesus is. That 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 you want to be uh, positive. You want to have a positive impact on people. And so forgiveness is really important, but you can't stop there. You, you've got to take, you've got to take uh, things to heaven, take people to heaven and uh, pray for them, pray for their welfare. You don't want people to have a heart attack because they are mad and upset at you and hostile. No, you want, you want those people you want to pray for those people. That's one of the, one of the skills that I learned uh, mm -hmm. was to start with forgiving people, uh, but go beyond that and get to the point where I could pray for their welfare. And begin to bless them. And begin to bless them. And, and I, I take this uh, as a pra very practical thing, and it helped me a lot. I had one man in particular that was very hostile towards me, and it caused me uh, great problems because he was so hostile towards me. Well, and all I was trying to do was do my job and get the department working properly. And there, when I became the department head, there was a lot of mess. And I had to clean up a lot of mess that people had made. And well, they were a lot of them were selfish and they were doing uh, selfish things just to fulfill their destiny. And so what I had to learn to do was I had to do some uh, practicing skills and I had to forgive and I had to pray for those people. And one man in particular that was very hostile to me, I wrote his name down on a piece of paper and I said, I forgive him. And I, and I took that piece of paper and I wadded it up and I threw it in the trash. And I, I beyond that day, I never had problems with him again. I see you, you can take that internally or you can throw it out. You can, you can put, I could not take uh, that hostility and internalize it into my life. And so it, it was just a symbol, but it was a very effective way for me to deal with him. I wrote his name uh, on the sheet of paper and I could have written down some of the things that he had done. And then I wadded them up and I threw them. Uh, and that was my action and my response to him. And 
Then after that, I could always remember that scene. It was a, mm. uh, it was a very vivid scene in my life that I could, uh, and I could see him. I'd go down the hall. I, I had to interact with him uh, beyond that. But I wouldn't think about all of the, the times that he threatened me, the times that he shouted at me. I, I thought about when I threw that piece of trash down uh, because I was just putting it all at the cross, at the feet of Jesus. I was putting all of the sins, all of the hostility against me. I was putting it at the feet of Jesus Amen. to take Amen. care of it. Amen. Okay, so I'm just giving you that. I'm giving you some practical skills uh, to deal with the, the, the problems in life that we all uh, come in contact with. What I really want to talk about today is the peace of God. We've got to get to that mm. peace of God. And where is the peace of God? See, so many people try to live backwards. And, and, and with respect to peace, they want to go out there and get uh, something on the outside and bring it in and cause them to have peace. Well, that's the reason a lot of people uh, take uh, uh, narcotics or take uh, alcohol. alcohol or a prescription and drugs drugs because they're taking something on the outside and trying to get peace on the inside. Mm -hmm. But here's the real truth of the matter. The peace is already in you. The peace of God is in you. Jesus said uh, in, in John 14, 27, he said, my peace, I, I leave with you. you. So you've got it. Uh, so you don't you don't go out there and look for it. See, the world is going out there and looking uh, for peace. They want peace, but they will never find it. Uh, if you go, if you turn on the TV today, right? Oh, uh, it'll be fearful. Right? It, there'll be uh, things to worry about mm -hmm. and things you couldn't have even imagine before you turned on the TV. There will be things to worry about. And so, what I'm saying, there are skill sets that you need to apply in your life, mm -hmm. in your life. And, and you need to elevate. See, this message is about Ooh, elevating elevate. an elevated lifestyle. And so you've got to have skills. And that's what I'm talking about. And the you know, main skill you. is about the peace of God. Okay, I think okay. Sherry has something she wants well, to say. Well, I just, uh, I just I thought about a, a little chorus that says, you know, set my feet on higher ground. Uh, and and I believe that that's what he wants for all of us to set our feet on on higher ground. Amen. Amen. Okay, so where is peace? Peace is inside of you. And we're going to look at some verses. Peace is inside of you. And so you don't look out there and try to get peace and get it to come in. Peace is already in you. If if you are a Christian, if you've been born again, if you've accepted Jesus, he's come into your heart. And uh, so it's Christ in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and, and uh, Colossians 127 says, Col Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen. And Galatians 2, it also talks about Christ in you. He said, uh, I'm crucified, nevertheless I live. But it's not me, it's Christ that lives in me. So Hallelujah. what I'm saying, here's two verses. Galatians 2.20 says Christ is in you. And Colossians 1.27 says Christ in you is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. And, and so you have hope. If you have Christ yes. living in you, Hallelujah. you have hope. Now I want Sherry to read uh, the third verse that I have down there, which I, I believe is, uh, what is Colossians that? Colossians 2. Colossians 2, I'd like for you to read that. And what we're going to see here is if you have Christ in you, you have more than that. Okay, so let's read this. This is Colossians 2, verses 8 through 10. For in him, Christ, all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. And, and that was, where is 8? Was the ninth verse. Was yeah, the ninth verse. number 10. And in him, you have been made complete. And he is the head over every ruler and authority. Okay. So the point here is that Jesus Christ lives in you. And not only does he live in you, there's somebody else that lives in you. It's the father and 
to the Holy Spirit. So mm -hmm. the Father lives in you. The Jesus son. Christ, the Son, lives in you. And the Holy Spirit lives in you. Okay, so if you've been born again, all of those live in you. Now, not only that, uh, I have a, a verse that says the Holy Spirit, just to confirm, it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah, first this Corinthians is 1 6. Corinthians 6, 19. Read that, please. Okay. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own okay so first we read christ is in you we read two verses christ is in you then we see if christ is in you the father and the holy spirit are also in you and then this verse says the holy spirit lives in you you are the temple your body is the mm -hmm. temple of the holy spirit and then uh, uh, second corinthians 6 16 says that the father lives in you okay or what agreement does the temple of god have with idols for we are the temple of the living God, just as God has said. Okay, so God is in us, and he walks in us, and he talks in us. Mm -hmm. And so there are the Godhead. All three, yeah, the three of them are in us. And what does that mean? Okay, so Christ is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. The Father is in us. If the Father, the Father has everything. Yes. And he, he's in you, okay? And he's given everything to Christ. Mm -hmm. So Christ oh, yeah. has everything, has been given everything. Now, what, it, what has he been given? Uh, one of the things, most important things, is he is known from Isaiah to be the Prince, Prince of, of peace. peace. So he is peace. So it's Christ in you is the peace. Okay, he's the Prince of Peace, and the Holy Spirit uh, is the one who administers peace. And so that's the reason we need a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit administers the peace of God in our life. Uh, now, so where is peace? Peace is not out there. You, you can't... Uh, if you send armies uh, around the world to stop all wars, that's not going to give you peace. You can't look outside for peace. Where is peace? Peace is inside, inside of you. Okay, so that's a very important thing to remember. Peace is on the inside of you. Okay, so we know it's inside of you. It's in, it's in your spirit man. See, when you're born again, your spirit man becomes alive and it's filled with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and, and it's with filled with the peace, peace of God, God that passes understanding. Now, what does that mean? It passes, it, you cannot understand it. With your natural mind. You cannot understand peace, God's peace. So let's talk about peace for a minute. You can't understand it, but it's there, <coughs> and it's inside of you, and so what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to ring the elevator. We're going to have to push the button on the elevator and bring up peace. So how do we Hallelujah. get peace? We don't go looking outside for peace because the, the, the world can't find peace. The world doesn't have peace. Uh, see, Jesus said, I give you peace. And that's the peace that the world doesn't have. The world can't give it to you and the world can't take it away. Hallelujah. But peace is on the inside of you. And so to live an elevated life, that's what I'm talking about. And this is the this is the real important point I want to make. You have to bring up. You have to call, have to up, call it up. You have to call up the peace that's within you. You have to know that the peace of God is in you, and you have to call it up. Now, remember we talked about resolutions earlier, and there were two resolutions I want to just mention today because they they. Uh, apply here and one of them said confess your faith confess that means you've got to speak out what your faith is and the other one was confess your hope let us confess our hope and let us confess our faith now hope hope is futuristic it's it's looking out there ahead and faith is bringing it back it's it is the substance faith mm -hmm. is the substance that's bringing it, it to manifest to manifest and so where is peace? It's inside of you. How do we get it? We call it up. We, it's like pushing an elevator button. We want it to come up. And you have to realize 
that that peace is inside of you and it will come up. And so the issue is we need to practice peace. Amen. And that's what I began doing uh, 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago. I began practicing peace. And in every situation and every time people would uh, uh, come against me, I, I had to practice peace. Mm. And I encourage each of you to practice peace. Hallelujah. Because you, good, the world will cause you to have thoughts that are about fear. That's right. They will, the world will cause you to have thoughts uh, that relate to worry and anxiety. So you, so you let those things build up and it moves from just simply worry to anxiety. I had a man, a young man called me one day and he said he was just having these anxiety attacks. Well, what had happened? He uh, had let little things get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so it might have started with fear. It might have started with worry, but those things got bigger and bigger, and then they turned into anxiety. And so you, you've got to cut it off, cut the head of the snake, snake off. off. Amen. Don't let it get bigger and bigger. You hear that, George? Don't mm. let it get bigger and bigger. You cut the head mm. off. Amen. And, and, and deal with bringing forth peace. Elevate. Go to the elevator and push the button call forth peace amen call amen. it to come up you've got peace in you call it to come up that's what you need i, I believe all of you need peace today see we mm. also talked about rest well you've got to be peaceful in order to have rest to go into rest to go into rest so we've got it, peace is an important thing don't let your heart be troubled yes, don't be anxious yes. about anything you have peace within you. You have the Prince of Peace living inside of you. Call him up. Hallelujah. You know, a good example was Jesus Christ. And he, he said uh, to the disciples, he said, let's go across uh, to the other to side, the other side of, the, of the lake. And so they got in the boat and, and he went to sleep. Now, why could he go to sleep? Because he had peace within him hallelujah now, the, other, the other disciples the disciples the, they weren't peaceful they got into a storm they saw the storm and the waves were coming and they're filling up the boat mm -hmm. so so they were looking they weren't looking at jesus they were looking at the storm they were looking at the waves I mean, they were looking at external things things that are outside and, and and they're wanting peace but peace doesn't come from the without it doesn't come from the outside. It comes from within. within. We have to elevate it. We have to call on peace to rise up. Amen. You, you know, you, you don't just uh, uh, get rid of a negative thing by just saying, go away, negative thing. Uh, so if it's fear, you don't just say, fear, go away. No, what you focus on is on the truth. And, and the truth is that the peace of God is within Amen. you. And, and you focus on the peace because he is the prince of peace, you focus on the peace and, and the fear goes. Hallelujah. And, and you focus on the peace and, and the worry goes. I mean, and you focus, focus on, on the peace, peace and the anxiety goes. So you never let it build up and mount up so that it becomes anxiety. You deal with it when it's fear, when it's worry. Uh, you, you deal with it then and mm -hmm. you overcome. It says he who overcomes. Uh, Hallelujah. You've got promises when you overcome. Well, how do you overcome? You have to call up peace. Hallelujah. And so worry uh, tries to, to creep in there. You, you get a telephone call from your family and this is happening to them and that. You begin to worry. You, you, you begin to be fearful. You look at your bank account and you get fearful and, and, and you worry about this. And you get fearful about that and all that begins to mount up. Is somehow you've got to take authority over it and realize that the greater is he that is in than you than, than he, he that is in the world. world. And, and start calling forth peace. Confess your hope. My hope is to have peace, that I have peace tonight, that I can lay down and have a sweet sleep tonight. My hope and my faith is that 
I, I'm going to have a peaceful night's rest that I'm going to have peace. I'm going to walk in peace. Uh, glory to God. I walk by faith, not by sight. sight. And so this is about peace. We need to live in peace. And Jesus Christ purchased peace for you. It says the chastisement, his, the chastisement of, of him was upon him so that you could have peace. So he was punished. He was beaten. He was bruised so that you could have peace. He, he paid the price on the cross for you to have peace. Now, are you going to reject it and say, oh, I don't want peace? We all need peace. And he paid the price for it. And we have to walk it out. And you, you do it on a day-by-day -day basis. Practice peace. Calling it up. Bringing up the elevator. It's inside of you. It's at one level. It's in your spirit. And you've got to call it up so it begins to flood over your mind uh, because you can't understand peace. It just is there because that's the person of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, and you let him become active in your life. And see, there's another verse I want Sherry to read, and this is uh, from Galatians 3. It's the last one there. Let and it, it says we can clothe ourselves in Christ. Mm. Okay, read this, Sherry. This is Galatians 3.27. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. So, so you have Christ in you, and now you have you are in Christ. Now, okay. Oh, hallelujah. You're, Christ is in you, and you are in Christ. You've clothed yourself. See, you were created in Christ, and you, Christ is in you, and now we see that you are in Christ. Okay, so what does that mean? You are in Christ. Well, if you have a problem, it's in Christ. See, keep yourself Woo, in glory. Christ. And, and, and maybe your family's not acting the way they ought to. Well, but they are in Christ because you are in Christ. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Your family is in Christ because you are in Christ. Your, your, your problems are all in Christ. Approach them because they are in Christ, because everything that pertains to you is in Christ. You are in Christ, hidden in Christ, and in God. And, and so the devil, to get to you, would have to come through Christ, have to come through God. So it has to come. The devil, to get to you, would have to come through God. Then we'd have to go through Christ. And let me tell you, they can't do it because the he devil's can't. already been defeated. He can't cross the bloodline. Jesus defeated the devil uh, at the cross. So the message today is a very simple message. Mm. If you need to forgive somebody, forgive them. Uh, and, and don't just leave it at just forgive them, but do something positive. Bake them a cake. Uh, mm -hmm. speak a blessing mm -hmm. over them do something positive so that when you think about that person you think about the blessing that you that gave you, them yes amen you, amen you, you bless them uh, you maybe you prayed for them and you remember the blessing don't remember the harm they caused you don't remember the the uh, turmoil and stress they caused you remember what you did Remember the blessing that you blessed them with. And they don't have to hear yeah. it. They don't have to receive it. You can say it into the air and, and bless them. Or you can pray for them just between you and the Father. You don't have to even go to them. And, and then you can remember what you did, the blessing that you gave, yeah. not what harm they brought to you. And this is a very powerful message today. Amen, amen. We all deal with fear, worry, worry and anxiety. anxiety. How are you going to deal with it? Well, deal with it by uh, uh, with an elevated lifestyle amen. where when you need peace, you just call it up. Hallelujah. Call it up. I need peace. Call it up. Practice peace every day. Practice calling peace every day. Now, if it's an elevator, you think about how an elevator operate some sometimes that elevator just comes up express it's an express Woo! here it is i push the button and it's just there the door opens the piece comes out it just pours out over me and sometimes i push the button I, I i use my faith and i say peace come come 
come up, uh, please. Yeah. It may not come up right then, but it's coming. Uh, because why? Hallelujah. Because we trust God. Amen. We can trust God. And that way we always know it comes up. You, you know, Colossians 3.15, and this is really an important verse for me. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Amen. That, that's how I operate with him. And that's how I've operated for years and years is make sure I have the peace of God ruling in my mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. And that's the peace of God that comes from Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross. He died on the cross for me so I could have peace. He was bruised. He was beaten. All of those things to him so I could have peace. Amen. Now, if I don't accept peace, if I just continue to worry and I worry and, and, and I'm fearful and I'm anxious about things, it's like me slapping him in the face and saying, well, Jesus, you, you didn't, didn't do, do enough. enough for me. <laughs> you just didn't do enough for me. But let me tell you, he did enough. He did enough for you. Amen. You receive his peace. Call it up. Hallelujah. Live, live an elevated lifestyle. Practice peace each and every day. I'm turning it over to Sherry. Amen. Thank you for Let's being sing here. Let's of course, thou will keep him in perfect peace. Okay, this is, is this is Isaiah 26, verse 3. And it says, oh, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it first okay. and, then let, and then we'll sing it to you. He will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is it's stayed, stayed on, on him. Me. So it's about your mind. Who He will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him because you trust in him. That's what it's all Amen. about. Amen. That sums up this message tonight. He will keep you in perfect peace. Perfect peace. Yeah, we'll sing it. All right. That will keep, keep him in perfect, perfect peace. peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in the Lord. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in the Lord. All right, Oh, that's good. That's good. We love to sing the scriptures. Uh, if you sing the scriptures, it gets down in your heart quicker. And uh, so um, as we traveled back and forth, uh, learning the, the ministry, and we went 45 miles one way, and we did this uh, in 45 miles back. We did this for 11 years and three times a week. And to study the word of God, to study the, the prophetic uh, anointing and uh, the teacher anointing and and um, and so we sang uh, we we taught the the scriptures to our children uh, through singing singing them and um, uh, and so there's many many scriptures uh, that we could sing to you tonight uh, but that that's a very important one that we just sang that he will keep you in perfect peace uh, when your mind is stayed on him. You know, there's so many things out there right now. Uh, the world is in turmoil and in crisis mode. And, and we must keep our minds stayed on the Lord and think on, on those things. Think on things that are pure and lovely and of good report and are pure. And, um, and it, will, it will keep us in, in that perfect peace. And um, I know that that some of you have been going through some some trying uh, times, uh, but please know that the Holy Spirit is saying to you tonight, just know that that peace is on the inside of you already. And like Brother Fred said, hit the elevator button and bring it on up. And um, and that way you can walk in a higher level, uh, an elevated level. Uh, not uh, down on the, you know, you're not a worm. You're not something that's crawling uh, in the in the dirt, uh, but that you are a child of the Most High God, and that you you deserve uh, to live uh, an elevated life, a life that's free of worry, a life that's free of fear and and anxiety. Uh, that's that's where you're supposed to be living. And um, this was, I mean, 
this message touched my heart. And um, like Brother Fred said, I'm going to open it up in just a moment to hear uh, what you have received from this message tonight and what you're going to take with you. Uh, but I do have a homework assignment for you. And when I give a homework assignment, I'm not fooling around. I'm not messing around. When I give a homework assignment, I mean for you to do it. And, and if you're in this group and you want to participate in this group, uh, then, then let's follow through uh, with these things because I don't say these things off the top of my head. But Brother Fred started this message tonight with uh, the unforgiveness and, and forgiving others. And so your assignment between now and next Tuesday is to find one scripture. I'm also asking for one scripture. Take time to find one scripture that you want to speak over someone that you are forgiving. To bless them, to bring them a blessing. The word of God is a blessing. And so if you, an example, if you've got someone who has um, uh, stolen uh, something from you, then speak a blessing of, of prosperity over that person. Speak a blessing that they will prosper and be in health, even as, 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 as their soul prospers. Speak a blessing over them. And so I want you to come back next Tuesday night with one scripture that you have spoken over someone. You don't have to tell me who. And, you know, that, that's between you and the Lord. And, and, and you don't have to go see the person if you don't want and, to. And you don't even have to see the person. But one scripture, one blessing that you can speak over uh, that individual. And, uh, and it certainly... Uh, will take effect because God hastens to perform his word. And when you speak a blessing over someone, then the Lord is right there to perform it. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, that's your homework assignment between now and next Tuesday night. And so I'm going to open it up for the, the next few moments. Uh, you know, what have you learned tonight? And what are you going to take with you tonight? Just unmute yourself. I think this is a, a weighty, powerful message. Weighty, powerful. And uh, the convincing testimony and our you know. lord said you heard you were told long ago not love your neighbor mm -hmm. hate or enemy but i tell you love your enemy amen amen, amen. Lord, good george you hate you that's uh uh put the uh uh, Dr. White put into practice. Right. We can memorize easily uh, memorize those verses, but the put into practice is uh, not so easy. Amen. Loving, uh, with a uh, loving heart. Yeah, that's uh, uh, very, very precious, I would say. Very, very, Amen. Yeah, weighty and uh, convincing testimony and the message amen <laughs> amen thank you, thank you george. george thank you george yeah i think forgiving really is, is so beautiful forgiveness it just it, it free us up and and like that right, bring peace so i think it's a choice even yeah. we know in our in our mind but we practice that and bless others and sometimes it's not just people offend us sometimes people that uh, cause harm to our children, our relatives, and sometimes we get offended too because of that. But we need to learn to see all these things, like Dr. White said, all the promises that we see. I think we have to have the perspective of the Lord, that we are in Jesus, 
Whatever happened, God has a purpose to bring blessing, even the enemy tried to bring. Amen, amen, amen. So Excellent. Say a blessing to those people that bring harm to us or revive, revive us, whatever. I think we are overcomer. And not only we have peace, but we speak peace to others too. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Excellent. Beautiful. Queen. why to talk about these let's see uh we can't hear you quinn i heard you yeah speak again speak again Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I think my earbud has a problem. Well, I wear it and I, I speak it. And you guys cannot hear me. I had a problem. He called me, somebody called me this afternoon and she said she cannot hear me. I said the peace, uh, uh, when Dr. White talked about the peace, I feel like that's, that's uh, the credential for our elevated lifestyle. Because if otherwise, um, if we don't have peace and we will live on the edge, like we're on the edge shell. And uh, how we get the peace, we need um, a bind to Jesus. And uh, yeah. he's in us, we're in him. And as long as we have peace and our family around us will have peace also. So, I mean, I mean. Um, yeah, I, I feel like we need a practice because like worry, anxiety, those are our human nature, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we get very easy to worry. And right. when the sins comes up, how are we gonna uh, come to the Lord and pray and seek his peace is very yes. important. Yeah. Amen, amen. Excellent, excellent. Amen. Excellent. And Wonderful. I like your homework also, to find the one verse to, yeah. Uh, for whoever person you want to speak of and uh, uh, bless the, the person you want to forgive with that uh, Bible verse. I Amen. Thinking, who Amen. Should I, who should I do that? Yeah. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. okay. Someone else share with us. Jenny? Uh, yes. Thank you for the message today. And uh, I know uh, to live uh, in Christ, then you uh, I can have the, you know, no fear, uh, no worry, no anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. I mean, to, you know, uh, Forgive not only forgiveness but also go beyond. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Outstanding. Uh, Outstanding, Jenny. Okay. Thank someone you. else. Okay. Someone else share with us. Okay. Okay. No. Ali. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, thanks for teaching today, tonight. And uh, I I think Dr. White says, uh, don't remember um, the things, that those harms or negative things other people brings to you uh, to remember what you did for them. Yeah, this I is- mean, I mean. I mean. <laughs> Excellent. I, I think I need a practice. <laughs> so, <laughs> So like uh, uh, for me, I learned and um, forget and the forgive. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. For forget those because I just like a princess. It's very easy to remember those unhappy moments. Yeah. Yes, and and, and uh, think over and over and over yes. every mm -hmm. time when. When I um, talk about it, or, or when I think about it, it's kind of like a harm one more time. So, yes. yeah. yeah, so uh, I need to practice to forget, forget yeah. those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then forgive. And then just like Jenny says, and do the beyond. <laughs> <laughs> yes. a lot of, uh, 
a lot of uh, things. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you. Thank yes, you. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. So we have two more, Jenny, I mean, Jen and Sophia, if you have uh, something that you want to share with us. Um, thank you for the message. Uh, I'm in a, a fight pain because I have the si uh, sciatic pain uh, of uh, my left leg. So uh, <laughs> I really hope I'm not worried uh, or um, fear, but uh, just uh, so um, disturbing by this pain. Yeah. Okay. It's the sciatic nerve. Uh huh. Okay, in the name of Jesus, receive this healing. I'm speaking it forth right now by the authority of the Holy Spirit uh, that your sciatic nerve is peaceful, that the inflammation has left your, your hip and leg area in the name of Jesus, and that the fire of God has gone into your body and to that part of your body in Jesus' name. Receive Amen. it, Jen. Thank you. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let the peace of God rule in that part of your body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Sophia, do you have anything for us? You may be still driving. Still. still. Hi. Uh, there you are. Yeah, I was uh, driving. I just uh, arrived home. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I I think this is message is really for me. <laughs> because recently I have very like uh, very hurtful feeling okay. for my uh, uh, like uh, my father okay. because he was sick and then I was trying to help. But he always like uh, I feel like uh, sometimes I did something good that he will interpret to the wrong way, yeah. and then he will tell my family what I did to him. Mm. So I feel so bad. I was like uh, in like uh, ask he, what he's doing, and then he was like uh, uh, oh I was like uh, order him. I was bossy. I feel like uh, what's wrong? I was like uh, you know very fearful to communicate with him even right now. I was like. Uh, very simple, you know, ask what's doing, what's your medical condition, what your doctor says, something about that. So this is just one of the example that it happened just between our uh, relationship. So I was very uh, like, a, uh, you know, I was, it's very hard for me to like, a, to be honest, sometimes like a swallow it, you know, like, a, yeah. you know, this is like just one minor since I share. So I, 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 I tell myself I know I have to forgive him, but sometimes it's hard because the you know like the painful feeling what comes up, and then I was suppressed. I say no, I have to forgive him. And it's like a wave come again, again like come and then again. So, so I was like uh, uh, really the, the past couple of weeks I was like that. So mm -hmm. I need to like uh, uh, Dr. Y say, I, I like the previous sister, like uh, uh, Shirley, she say, uh, I need to uh, uh, think about what I did to him, not, not remember what, you know, he did for me, you know, he did to me, right? right. That's right. Right. right, that's exactly right. 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 And, yeah. and pick out a scripture, pick out a verse that you mm -hmm. can speak over your father. Speak um, over your father that he is, he is a loving man. He is uh, a man of compassion. Speak, speak over him and bless him and bless him. Remember, God will do it. God will manifest. Amen. Okay, thank you. And also, uh, uh, please uh, pray for me. I just uh, recently uh, diagnosed I have a uh, rheumatoid uh, arthritis. Rheumatoid because, arthritis? Mm -hmm, because I was... Okay. I feel like very tired, like I've been like one or two years and my joints like um, uh, sometimes it's uncomfortable. And then recently I find out it's because my fingers are like uh, swelling, my finger joints. And okay. so to uh, doctor to, and then 
you know, they just do some lip oil and then just uh, confirm that. But I, I think I, I, I kind of uh, appreciate God. I think this is the wake up call. Then because he, he, he told, told me that I need to take care of my temple because my body is his temple. So. Amen. And as you, let me tell you something. As you begin to forgive your father, mm -hmm. the arthritis will go away. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And, and also, you're going to feel, even after this meeting tonight, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to feel warm all over your body. And that's the fire of God because I'm sending it into every joint in your body. And I'm saying that the rheumatoid arthritis is dead and gone. Thank in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so, do you remember what God did with your husband? Yes, I, I, I remember. Yeah, I think Okay. About well, he's no respecter of persons. And, and he loves you just as much as he loves your husband. Mm -hmm. And so, he is doing that for you right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes, I did. I do. Okay. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. going gonna, gonna to feel warm all over your body. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I see, I see the compassion and the love and the forgiveness already in your heart uh, for your father. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I already, I already see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I just ask for that to come up in you uh, and, and that, that peace to come up in you uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Your 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 and uh, Doctor White and Sister Sherry can and uh, can someone you or Doctor White or anyone lead us uh, pray for people, uh, in Ukraine and yes the, yes, and brother Fred and I've been praying every single day. Uh, yeah. Ukraine, Russia. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to tell you what I've seen. I've seen that the attack of the enemy has been stopped. I, I saw mm -hmm. angels. Uh, descending from heaven uh, yesterday. I saw that the Lord has already sent forth his angels, his angel army uh, to fight for the Ukraine, uh, Ukrainians. And, uh, and that this has been stopped in Jesus name. We agree with what the Lord is doing right now. We agree uh, that the Ukrainians are strong, that they are very courageous, uh, that they are warriors. Uh, that they are, they have uh, plenty of food to eat, uh, they have clothing, uh, they have provision, and they have uh, weapons uh, that will help fight uh, the enemy uh, in the name of Jesus, in Amen. the name of Jesus. But I Amen. see, I see many things happening between now and the weekend uh, in this situation, and it's good things. I see good things. Uh, happening uh, in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. There are so Amen. many believers and Christians in the Ukraine and they Amen. are believing the Lord and we agree with them right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. That for, for divine intervention. intervention. Divine intervention. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, George. Amen. Amen. Thank Praise you. the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, remember your homework assignment yeah. I'm only asking for one one scripture that you're going to bless somebody with uh, someone that has uh, hurt you someone that has injured you uh, in any way hallelujah and uh, we're we're going up 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 with the Lord hallelujah going up with the Lord praise the Lord we love each one of you and we'll look forward to next Tuesday night. Amen. Amen. Bye bye. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye.